Hey all you nerds, so today's video is going to be about uh, stopping unwanted rattle in fidget sliders. So this is, uh, I mean this is kind of geared more towards the wrapped in a way, but I mean this does happen, you know, with Magnus stuff as well, where you're, um, you're just getting a rattle in there that you don't want. I mean, this one, I've made it rattly. Horrible example. I liked that, so I did it that way. So, you know, that's no, um, of those silicone rings that, uh, Mr. McDonald likes to use, uh, inside there to stop his magnets from moving around. But if we're talking about the wrapped, uh, what tends to happen sometimes, and it's really common with um, the brass inserts for some reason, uh, you'll end up having, I'm just opening this one up because it's going to be an example in a second here. What you end up doing is the thickness of, of the insert itself ends up being slightly thicker than the actual magnet. Okay, so all these magnets are an eighth inch thick, where they're supposed to be. So all the inserts are supposed to be an eighth, eighth inch thick. That's a hard one. Eighth inch thick. There you go, man. Okay, so they're supposed to be that thick, but they can technically be a little bit less. It's not ideal. But if you have one where it ends up being, you know, a tiny bit less, what's going to happen is that when you have your foam insert on top, even if the magnet sticks slightly proud of the insert, that foam is still going to compress down between the top of the magnet and the top of the inside of the body of the wrapped and it's going to squish it all together and hold everything tight like i said ideally you want everything to be just flush smooth all the way along the top so that being said what happens with the brass sometimes and this happens mainly because uh in order for jonas to really get the wrapped off the ground and have it uh, be you know, affordable for all of us and really work. All of his, I believe it's aluminum and the brass inserts, those are all uh, made off, out, out of shop. He gets those all lasered cut um, from a company. And sometimes they're not laser cut perfectly, perfectly the same, all right? That's just something that happens. Uh, you know, it's getting better as it goes along and more batches, um, you know, get made. Uh, but some of the ones from the first batches, um, specifically like this one, I found out this is a, you know, a two click or a two by three, however you want to call it, uh, brass strong. Uh, this one was from the one of the first batches of of these getting cut off site. And what happens? is that this ended up, and I'm going to show you in a second, like in a wrapped, and you'll see what I mean. It just ended up that you had the thickness of this insert was a little bit more than eighth of an inch. So the magnet ends up kind of not coming right flush to the, the end of that. So that what happens in turn is that when you have your foam insert on top, no matter how much it gets squished between the inside of the body of the wrapped and this insert, it's not grabbing the top of the magnet. So that magnet still has the ability to move in and out on that plane inside there. Even if that's there, right? It's like it, all it's going to do is it's going to compress around this area around the magnet the foam and then it's still going to leave this tiny little space between the top of the magnet and the edge of the insert 
So I just wanted to explain that because that's kind of the, that's sort of the science that's going on there. If I can call that science, um, that's what's happening. Okay. So that's why you're experiencing sometimes like just, and you, you might know what I mean if, you know, you're watching this video and you, and you have a wrapped and you try that. It's like, sometimes I'll put, I'll put inserts in and I won't even notice that the magnets aren't, you know, that the inserts are the same thickness as the magnets and I'll start using it. I won't even notice it at first. And it's, it's so subtle sometimes because it'll be maybe one magnet that's off, right? And you don't even get it at first. So, I mean, you know, my ears developed a little bit more and I've been able to kind of pick it up and go, oh, no, there's something going on there, right? Um, and then I can open it up and, and try some different stuff. But, I mean, you might have not even noticed it yet, right? Or you might not notice it until you get, like, another wrapped that's not supposed to rattle. And then you're, you know, sliding it around and going, wait, this sounds quieter. Anyway, so let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to start here. So, you've probably heard there's some methods to do this. Uh, one of them is basically taking, like, a hole punch with for paper and filling in, you know, your gap, if you had, if you had this like little gap like this, and then putting the, the paper into those little gaps until you raise it up so it's flush with the top of that. I don't really like that method, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, so I'm going to show you a different one, okay? Um, so I want to get, I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to show you those ones later. And we'll just talk about the first method here. Not you. You stay. You stay. Okay. So let's try to get these guys in here. Always a bit of a challenge going from three click to two click. I'm just going to take these out. So I would try to, like I was thinking, should I, you know, load up, should I load up a wrapped with, you know, these inserts that I know to be too thick for the magnet? So you can already see it, right? You see that? This is, a, this is, these inserts, I'm glad I have these to do this video because they are a absolute wonderful example um, because it's just very easy to see it. You might even have brass inserts. It would be you know, you're, you're having the magnet come down. It's even half of that or something, you know, more like maybe that one. You see what I mean? So that's all, everything's all seated down into the plate, but you're still seeing that the insert is a little bit higher than the magnet. So most of the time it's just going to be the insert. Sometimes it's actually the magnets. Um, I've had it before where I've loaded one up with uh, inserts that seem totally fine and there's no rattle whatsoever and then I'll you know switch it and then I'll load it back up again and I'll go wait there's a little bit of rattle there and you open it up and you look and it, it, sometimes the, like, the magnets aren't perfect right they're all supposed to be an eighth inch but things happen in the factory and stuff like that but we can't really control that so we're just going to go with how we can control the uh, inserts here so this is a great example uh, you can see what's going on there. So sometimes people might take, you know, pieces of paper and, you know, you're totally welcome to do that. I find it finicky and uh, kind of not as precise as what I like to do because, you know, the the papers, paper can be thin, but then you're playing with like layers of it. And then you're also running into the fact that sometimes you can't get a piece of paper that's that's the thickness you want and it ends up being too much, you know, above the above the insert or too little and it's just it's too finicky for me to be honest so 
What I figured out is that it's all about sticky tack. Just your regular old run of the mill wall putty. It's stuff you hang pictures up with. Dollar store. Easy. Okay? So this stuff, you can fill it up into those holes, the gaps above the magnets, and it essentially eliminates any kind of rattle. It keeps everything very, very, very still. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put it in right now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to load this up without it and try to have you listen to the rattle because it just doesn't come through on camera. It's so hard. Like I was saying before, it's so freaking subtle. It's, I doubt you're going to be able to hear it. All right. So just trust me that, that this, you know, if I, if I loaded this up, as is and you know put the foam dampeners in and the body and we tried to play with it uh i would probably be able to hear it and you might not so probably not worth it so what we're going to do i'm just going to show you how i do this uh the trick is that you know my disclaimer before we do this is that be very careful with how much of anything you add you know to the top of the magnet to get it flush with the top of the insert all right because Ideally, you don't want to go any higher than that. You don't. Because what you're doing is you're just putting, you know, when the the plate comes to the body. So if you have if you have this and you're putting this back together, right? And you got the insert in there, and you've you've put kind of maybe a little bit too much in one of those, you're just causing you're just causing the body to sit up more than it needs to, right? And then when you go and screw that in, you're putting more strain on the plates and the screw hole and everything. All the tolerances in here are extremely, you know, precise because it's been machined precisely. So you want to be careful with that. And that's why I like this stuff because you can get it perfectly flush with the top of the inserts. So I'll show you what I do to do that. Let me just clear some. I got too many fidgets, man. I need a little space to roll some of this out. So it's so little, such a little amount. You hardly need anything. If you think you've done too little of it, you probably could go less. You in no way need to fill up that entire spot. So I'm just going to roll like big, long, super thin snake of it. Like it's so thin, it's almost, it's almost just going to break. Okay. So what I like to use... I've got just a, a little flat bar, all right? So I'm gonna use this to kinda, make sure you can see this, I'm grabbing like the tiniest little tip. It's really not a lot, very small, okay? And then, I'm grabbing this. So this this is magnetic metal. So it's going to go right down onto that magnet. But it doesn't really matter because I'll show you. I go. Goes on there. I can drag it. Off the edge. Oh, I took a magnet with me. Can you see it there? It's a very sticky piece. So you look at that, and because I can drag it right off the edge, I'm kind of using it as a, in terms like a screed. So you start little, and then you can add a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. And then if you look there, it's maybe a little bit higher than it, but no. And if you want to 
level it out a little bit more, you can just grab that. Ooh. Pull it across more. Okay, so that's a general idea. And it basically, basically leveled that right out. All right, so it's basically it. Right? I would just go along and I'd rinse repeat uh, the whole way around, every single one. Uh, in this case, it, it, it is every single one, I think. Some of them are borderline, but if you run your finger, tip your finger across there, and you can feel ever so slightly the edge of the insert, then you probably want to add a little bit. And you're going to have to play with the amounts, right? Like that, this one is going to need a lot less than the one that was here. And, you know, this one's going to need a lot more than this one and this one, right? So that's basically method one. And the other thing I love about it is that, uh, you know, some people want to use, I don't know, I've heard people using maybe glue. I don't think I've heard of any glue. Which is good because I think that would be a horrible, horrible cleanup. Um, I never have tape before, like tape along the along the edges of of the inserts, just to keep everything, you know, in one place. But that's that's not exactly where the problem is, right? It's not it's not these rattling back and forth. These are going to get held by the foam inserts. It's that space. It's that little bit of that space, right there that still allows that magnet to jump around up and down in that hole, right? And that, that basically, that solves it. I haven't had one yet where I put it all in and, and try it and it still rattles. So what I was talking about with cleanup is it's, it's great that way because sticky tack, I mean, you've used it before. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it gets, you know, it's so easy to just grab it and just, you know, Stick it to itself and then it's gone. It's done, right? So what'll happen uh, is that you will, you'll put this all together. You'll have the foam inserts on top. Um, and then if you go and take it out again, you're gonna take off the foam inserts and there'll be a bit of sticky tack like there. There's gonna be a bit of sticky tack almost, like it'll go down into the, into the inside in here a little bit. It might even make it all the way down into the slide plate. I've had it happen there before. But you kind of want that because it's it's naturally working its way into all the little you know nooks and crannies that shouldn't be there and just making everything more solid and less rattly. Um, and then, like I was saying, it, it really is no big deal. Like you just open it up, take, take everything out, grab your ball of sticky tack, you know, tap, 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 and it just, everything comes out and you're fine. So just so we're not going on too long here, like that's one way of doing it that I like to do it, do it that way and it'll work. Um, the other way that I, I actually fixed my, uh, my brass hybrid inserts this way, they were not nearly as, as bad as these two click brass, but there was, it was just ever so slightly, it was a subtlety, right? Remember I was telling you how uh, sometimes I would load something up and it would be fine. And then I'd reload it up another time and I'd hear a rattle. That's what was going on with these hybrids. It was just something about, you know, you could have this in position on one plate. And then if you moved it over the other side, then, then something would change and it would be different. And it just, it, it was weird, right? And then when I took a closer look at it, I realized, oh, I see what's going on. You know, there's there's just these subtle, subtle differences. So how I fixed these was just because it was such a subtle amount to take off of the brass is that I sanded them. So I literally, I mean, you can see the sanding marks, right? And they're smooth now too, because what I did is I just had, this is just like a sanding disc from a random orbital sander. It doesn't have to be... This kind of stuff right I just have it kicking around because i have an orbital sander but i just had it sitting there and then i would hold it very carefully that's the thing you <laughs> put gloves on or something like that i'm crazy you know and i would just rub it back and forth 
like that. I'm only holding it just a little bit there so that my the tips of my fingers don't uh, get uh, sanded off. Or I don't know, maybe you want to do your nails at the same time, right? You know, you just do that. Uh, yeah, so I would just do this. And then I would get the other side and give it a good sand. And then I had the plate all set up with the magnets in there. You know, we had a couple magnets. Sample. So I'd have it set up there like that. And now you can see the difference here. That is just, hmm. Mm, mm mm Nice and flush. Yes, sir. All right. So I had it sitting there and I would pull it out like that. And you take it back to the same thing. Give it a little more. Give it a little more. I would have done a lot more than that, probably. Just an example. And then you put it back and then you're going to, you know, Run your fingers over top, take a really good look at it, see how we're doing. The feel test is 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 one of the best ones, right? You just go across like that and you go, oh, okay, that's feeling like everything's on the same plane. All right? And then, you know, it was really rough after, so I just took a higher grit sandpaper after, you know, just to give it a little polish. This is like a, like 220 or something like that. This is like an 80 grit. 80 grit? 80 grit. Diablo. And then this is uh, just some aluminum oxide sanding paper, which is great for metal. And that's like, that's smooth as can be again. 280? Yeah, aluminum oxide 280. Yeah, that's kind of it, guys. Those are the two methods I like. Um, at some point, I will be, I will be sanding these down again. Uh, these are a little bit more of an extreme sand, right? That's, uh, that's, a, that's a little bit more in there than the uh, hybrid ever was. So I might actually just, you know, hook this up to my random orbital sander and, you know, find some way to kind of hold that without sanding myself or gloves or something, right? Haven't figured it out yet, but uh, I wanted to save these and make sure that they, uh, they weren't fixed yet so you could see what was going on. That's it. Putty or sandpaper. Works great. All right, any other, you know, questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you thought the video was rad, then, you know, like, subscribe. Uh, yeah, and uh, talk to you later, nerds.